Dale, IRAP student of Linden Associates with your Spider ETF video for, and this is your wrap up for Monday, June 15th, 2020. We're just after 6 p.m. on this. Apologize for not putting out any of my weekend videos for you, but I played hooky. It was that simple. I've been locked in and I don't miss these very much, but uh, these are free. My subscriber videos absolutely were out. So what do we have here? Well, we have another day where the Fed makes a move to save the market. Now, the timing of it, I don't think the Fed did anything with the COVID-19. Uh, I think it just worked that way. What do I mean? If you woke up like I did early in the morning and you looked at the futures, the futures were pointing to a monster decline in stock market. The market had panicked on the fact that China's had another outbreak of uh, COVID-19, this time in Beijing, and it's in a marketplace about 20 times the size, according to the Chinese papers, of Wuhan. They're locking down neighborhoods again and taking temperatures and going through the whole thing. They're not playing games with it. They are blaming Europe, at least not us, for it. They're claiming that salmon they imported uh, from Europe had the disease. They found it on a test on a cutting table. I didn't think it could stay along, alive rather that long on a ship, but I guess it can. And I don't know if that's truth or just finger pointing. So I'm not a doctor. What I do know is in the U.S. I know how to read. And we have serious outbreaks in Texas, Arizona, the state of Washington, North Carolina, and Florida. And they're all on the uptick. Now, it does get played down to a degree where people say, well, there's more testing and therefore more cases. Okay, but the hospitals are filling. So this isn't just cases. This is another outbreak if the hospitals are doing that. I know in Chicago, one of my friend's daughters works at a major hospital here, and they are now getting ready to open a ward that they had closed down. So I know this is for real and you've gotta be careful. If people stop wearing these masks until we have a cure or a treatment, it is not the best thing. But let's get back to what happened. So the market's going down on that and the Fed comes out and says that starting tomorrow, they're going to expand their bond buying program. I didn't get the details. I tried to find them, I couldn't find them. But apparently they're gonna spread it out to more corporations, more money into the economy. The market turned on a dime like that. You saw a thousand point return in the Dow before you knew what was going on. I mean, it was massive. I almost fell out of my chair as I watched the whole thing. It didn't just shoot up, but it started working its way. And if you, if you went out for an hour and you came back, the market was totally different. Energy prices recovered, everything recovered. Gold did not, silver did not, as you can see. Uh, and uh, one other market, the EFA. That wasn't, but let's go to the chart action. As we know on this XLK, the tech sector spider, the last high had been 102.94. We popped through it, gapped back under it, and that's where we've been sitting. So the market made a statement, but all of a sudden that number's become, if you will, for the moment at least, uh, something of a barrier. Let, let's call it that. When we put the swing line on the chart, this is the chart without the swing line, this is it with it. The pattern was broken. So if I come back here, you can clearly see you've got higher lows, higher highs, would you agree? The market starts a correction, 98.26. That's the number you don't wanna take out. It was taken out last Thursday. You didn't see me on Friday, but Friday it made an even lower low. Today the market gets a reversal but you've broken the pattern of higher highs, higher lows. You now have no trend. You have a higher high and lower low in the pure definition of what is an uptrend. It's typically higher highs, higher lows. When I put moving averages on, I go, mm-hmm. All the market did is fall back to what I call that line in the sand, the 18-day average of closes. What else do I look at? scratch the chin right here, and I go, we haven't been able to really close under that number. We're not going anywhere. We've just fallen back into a neutral area. That's my definition. What about 
the Bollinger Bands. Well, we know they were working on the way up. As much as the market kept going higher, it acted like a fence. You'd hit it and it'd get thrown back. And that's what kept happening. So they're still very much in play. Should the market reverse course tonight and you get a big decline for whatever reason, the lower band might come into play. But that would be an unusual sign because you haven't been in that band area since March. What would have changed? I don't know. And I'm not saying that would happen. What I am saying happen is momentum has turned down. Momentum is also no longer an overbought condition. What often happens is if you have what's called an embedded reading, it's when the red and the blue are just going sideways over 80 for days in a row, and when you lose it, prices often return to the 18-day average. And no, they don't do it as fast as this did, but that was a big break that day. You had a, nearly a 6% drop in the value of it. It went there, it held it, and the market seems to think for the moment that that's a value area because you're hanging at what I call that line in the sand. When we come to SMH, pretty similar. This is the semiconductor 25 index. You got a higher high and lower low. Same thing and you can't stay under it. In the meantime, the prices are breaking. You're still overbought because you have a reading over 70. So not quite as good a chart picture as you're seeing on the other. XLI, same thing. You fell back to the combination of the 100 day and the 18 and the market held. The break low today was 66.36, taking out this number. So for the first time in a very long time, you've broken this pattern of higher lows and higher highs, agreed? And that all happened with this uh, little break that we just had. That took it out and said goodbye. In the meantime, the market keeps dropping and you're getting close to an oversold condition. Any reading, I define any reading in the slow stochastic under 30 as being oversold. So I see a markets that have had a correction, but in the scheme of things, they're not acting all that bad. When I come to the energy sector spider, this is a little different. This is bearish. Lower highs, lower and low. But to get there, you're already in oversold territory. So what are you going to do with that? Now, to negate the downtrend, the market, all it has to do is take out 4084. That would give you then a lower and low, higher high, and you're back to neutral in the market. So we've had the correction. We know that we've corrected in energy prices, five, six dollars a barrel recently, and that's shown up here. QQQ remains the strongest of everything. It still has the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. Unable to close under the 18-day average like XLK. You're getting a correction. You're still in overbought territory because you have a 71.55 reading. Still a bull market. First time you heard me say that on any of those, right? Uh, let's see if I can get this. Now, EFA, the emerging markets, downtrend. And the market, let me take you to this. You had lower highs, lower lows already coming in, and you're just extending it. Now, 59.27, the 100-day average was the next objective since you've hit the 18. You hit it today, got to 59.13, and finished at 60.69. So traders are looking at that, but at this area, this 18-day average, I think the pros are going short right now with stops over 62.02, actually, right over the 62.01 high. Why? Because they've got the lower highs, lower lows, and momentum down. I'm not making, it's not a trade recommendation, it's simply what I think the pros are doing. In GLD, I don't see a trend. You stepped out of the trend today. Looking at it prior to today, first thing my eye goes to, and I, this is how I train you in my charting course, overbought. Trend up, if it extends, maybe the upper Bollinger Band, but you're basically caught in this crazy sideways pipe, and it's wider than I like to see, but I realize it's a pipe where you don't get follow through one way or the other. It tries to chop people up, and it's exactly what it's doing. So you stepped out of the uptrend, now you got a higher high and lower low, all against 
basically this 18-day average of closes. Very typical of a market that wears traders out, frustrates the heck out of them, and then out of left field, it starts a trend in one direction or the other. In the gold miners, all we did last week is get up, and I know I said this, to the 18-day uh, average of closes. Let me get back to Thursday. This is when I was with you. And you didn't do anything, and now you're still not. Are you tra trading? No. It's not a pipe formation. The GLD has got this sideways action. This is not a pipe. That is just the market that's playing around. What about TLT? Overbought. So as much as the market rallied back after a downside breakout, you haven't gotten through these past highs. And now the question is, is it worn? Is it, is it corrected enough to resume a trend? Now, let me give you what could happen. This high is 164.23. Then we had a down day on Friday. Today's high, 164.22. You didn't take that out. Should you take out this right here, this 162.05, I think it's 05, let me get to it, just check. Yeah, it is, 162.05 and close under 161.56, you're back into a downtrend. Let's assume that doesn't happen. Well, then you're in an uptrend and all you need to do to keep it going is not take out that 62.05 and take out 64.23 and you're liable to get another wave. Do I think it'll happen? Whenever you're overbought, I don't. FXE, you talk about a surprise, I did not see this coming on Friday. I thought this market was holding the embedded reading, I did not look for it to take out this low, and it did. That ends the uptrend. Now you got a higher high and a lower low, and now you're just spinning. Guess what? This is even uglier because when you lose an embedded reading, you often make a run that's closer than that to the 18-day average of closes. Uh, you could, on a rally here, see some new short selling. So be a bit cautious with that. You know, a lot of you have asked me about my package of my chart of my morning subscriber video and our afternoon spider ETF. In a nutshell, if you go to our website starting today, right now, and you go to the word research, the morning subscriber video, and the reason I love the two together, is at the end of the day, I do the spider ETF video. I do it between four and 4.30 typically. It's, I, I want it out before five o'clock for you. And it tells you what I'm seeing, but I, Every time I will say, you know, you want to see what the futures are doing in the morning. Well, at 5.40 in the morning, I'm recording my futures video, 5.40 a.m. Central Time. I want it in your hands well before those spiders open to say, hey, the futures are verifying certain things, the trend's staying up, and I cover all that. So what I did now is I combined the two into a combo package. And basically, you get a 10% discount on a month-to-month -month basis if you take both. So all you have to do is go to our website, www.irapstein.com, go to the combo package, and we offer a combo introductory price and you can sign up there and away you go. If you're already a combo taker, in other words, you have both videos, call your broker, my broker with that's with me, we will switch you over and get you into the combo package. Got it? I'm Ira, you have a good day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the morning.